Nvidia's first ever desktop CPU is releasing soon. But before I get to that, PCI Express bandwidth can heavily affect performance, Intel's making a terrible mistake, and AMD's about to break through Nvidia's monopoly. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, for quite a few years now, the PCI Express slot has been far ahead of the throughput needed for a discrete GPU. For the most part, it didn't really matter if you used times A, times 16, older generations, whatever. The GPU simply didn't need enough bandwidth to affect performance. Well, it looks like things have changed when it comes to the RTX 5090 because Puget Systems recently found that content creation performance can be affected by as much as 25% depending on what you use. As an example, we have this Puget System benchmark. This is Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve. And here you can see that obviously PCI Express 5.0 times 16 does the absolute best, but really all of these are pretty much neck and neck until we get down to either 16 times PCI Express 3.0, four times PCI Express 5.0, or eight times PCI Express 4.0. And here, you can see that it takes a massive drop in performance. Now you might be thinking, oh, who's going to use PCI Express 4.0 times 8 or times 4 PCI Express 5.0, but keep in mind that a lot of these boards only have a single time 16 PCI Express slot, given the fact that multi-GPU gaming is essentially dead at this point. So you may be using the wrong slot and inadvertently affecting performance. Of course, this isn't gaming, and according to a video from Gamers Nexus, there's really only a percent or so difference here. So not much to worry about there. But if you're doing any kind of content creation, it definitely does matter. But first, how awesome would it be to have a power bank or even a wall brick with a cable built right in? That's what Ugreen has done with their new line of products, starting with their Nexode 165 watt retractable power bank. This bad boy has a 20,000 milliamp hour capacity, so it can charge your iPhone 16 up to 3.8 times. But the coolest part is definitely the retractable USB-C cable, which can be extended to reach whatever you need, and it can deliver up to 100 watts from this one USB-C cable to charge a 14-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 54% in just 30 minutes. Or you can get 165 watts via two USB-C ports. Now, the first thing I thought about when I saw this was durability. This cable is obviously pretty important. Luckily, Ugrain has designed it to withstand over 25,000 retraction cycles and 10,000 plus bins. So it's built to last, and you can charge up to three devices at once. It's really got it all. Oh, and they have their Nexode 65 watt retractable charger, which is essentially a wall brick with the cable built right in. So you'll never have one without the other. Check both of these out and Prime Day deals up to 40% in the description below. And next up for today, while well, I've been really excited talking about Intel's next generation Nova Lake CPUs, we're talking up to 52 cores. I mean, like, doubling of the cores, it really is unbelievable. Unfortunately, like I've also sort of mentioned the possibility of Intel releasing an Arrow Lake refresh first. Well, unfortunately, it looks like that is in fact the case, at least according to ZDNet Korea. Here, you can see that there is in fact an Arrow Lake refresh, which will be released in the second half of this year. It's expected to target AI demand with a slight increase in operating clock and replacement of the NPU. Basically, Intel, I seriously still don't think that they should do this, but at least according to this, it sounds like what Intel is really trying to focus on is bringing out more AI performance out of it with a better NPU, probably just something that's slightly better than what they have now, nothing massive or anything like that. But really, even if it is massive, if that doesn't matter, because at least if you ask me, NPU performance is not at all driving this demand. Now, maybe it's a little bit of it, or maybe even people who are looking at CPUs are going, okay, Intel versus AMD. Well, AMD's does have a faster NPU, but the highest factor, at least if you ask me, for consumer products like this 
is definitely going to be just regular performance. And if this is correct, and of course it likely is, the only real increase here will be some slight increases to clock, likely to better node performance, being able to bend the CPUs, things like that. But essentially, we are not talking about a big performance increase at all. And given the fact that Intel has been completely spanked left and right by both AMD's X3D chips, as well as their regular CPUs, but definitely more on the X3D side of things. This really is not a smart move by Intel, if you ask me. Now, I will say that they're almost certainly not at all prepared to release Nova Lake yet, and that's likely why they're just kind of doing this to throw something out there in the meantime, but... Still, given just how terribly these performed, I really don't think this is a good idea. Next up, many of you likely know that Nvidia essentially has a monopoly when it comes to AI. Some of that obviously has to do with the fact that they had a huge hand in creating the market to begin with. They had the foresight to see what was coming, heavily invest in it, and pave the way for the technology we have today. Ultimately, AMD and Intel have been playing catch up. But it's been a little while now, and AMD especially has made some great strides in terms of raw hardware performance. But NVIDIA still has one advantage that AMD can never really compete with. One thing that trumps petaflops, more memory, and all of that. NVIDIA's built a walled garden that developers rely on, and it all comes down to one thing. Their CUDA core. This is what ultimately drives NVIDIA's success forward. AMD has tried to make something comparable with their Rockham technology, but they're still very far behind. And that's where today's story comes in. If you remember not too long ago, something called Zluda was being made as a translation layer for other GPUs to use CUDA API calls. So quickly go over this story. As you can see here, it says, the Zluda library made headlines last year and it was initially designed to support Intel GPUs on Nvidia's software stack but eventually AMD took care of the project and together with multiple developers, molded it in a way that allowed them to break boundaries and access Nvidia's CUDA onto their own AI hardware, which was seen as a massive breakthrough for the open source community. However, AMD decided to scrap the project due to legal concerns, but Zluda is back. This time, they're coming in and coming in strong. As you can see right over here, it says the Q2 2025 status update for Zluda was posted today, where they shared they have now doubled in size. It's not a massive size increase because there's now only two developers working full time on the project, but still two is of course better than one. And given how many strides they had already made with it, this is great news. It says in addition to onboarding a second developer, Zluda has been dealing with ABI breaks in Rockham. Continued efforts on ensuring bit accurate execution across GPU drivers, improved logging, some progress on NVIDIA's PhysX support, and more. Basically, they are making massive strides forward, and this, of course, has huge implications for NVIDIA's monopoly moving forward. So much so that it could, in fact, end it and soon. And lastly for today, NVIDIA is set to release their first ever desktop CPU this month. It's called the GB10, and it is definitely one impressive chip. It's actually a gray CPU with a Blackwell-based integrated GPU. Remember, that's NVIDIA's most recent GPU architecture. Now, you've likely heard about this chip before, and that's because it's in NVIDIA's DGX Spark system. But thanks to some digging, you can see here that ASUS recently sent out invitations for their GB10 system set to launch on July. July 22nd. It's called the Ascend GX10 Mini PC. So we're talking just a few short weeks. NVIDIA will have their first serious desktop CPU. So quickly go over what we're talking about here. The GB10 is a 20 core CPU with 10 performance ARM cores and 10 efficiency ARM cores. When it comes to the GPU, NVIDIA doesn't explicitly state how many CUDA cores it has, but PNY and a couple others have shared this information. And according to them, you can see here, we're looking at 6,144 CUDA cores, which is the exact same number as the RTX 
5070. And when it comes to performance, Nvidia doesn't give us too much, but given the specs we know, and it's a Blackwell GPU, most people are expecting around 31 teraflops of FP32, which of course is the gaming performance. Now, with all of that said, this is not made to be a gaming chip. Nvidia will likely still include drivers for games, given this is looked at as a workstation chip, but it's way more geared towards AI. I'd say it's more of a competitor to AMD's Ryzen Max APUs. Though don't forget that Nvidia's rumored consumer chips, the N1 and N1X, are said to be based off this chip. So it definitely gives us an idea of where Nvidia can go. But for these systems, as an example, Nvidia's DGX Spark is around three grand. Maybe third-party options like Asus's Ascent GX10 with the GB10 will be a little cheaper, but I doubt it'll be worth it to buy exclusively for gaming. Still, this marks a very big month for Nvidia, and I'm definitely excited to see where this goes. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's first desktop CPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Ugreen's awesome new products down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.